أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم CFA with AMOS and analyzing AMOS output IBM SPSS AMOS Let's say I want to test a model that is a simple model with two unobserved variables. The first variable is a concept called servant leadership which is a modern leadership style that primarily explores the servant orientation of leaders with specific focus on followers growth and development. The servant leadership construct is hypothesized to be related to financial performance of the business. That is, servant leadership positively influences financial performance. The construct of servant leadership has seven indicators and financial performance has five indicators. Now before we check this hypothesis through our structural model, the first step is to design our measurement model. Now this is the model that we want to build. This is our measurement model. Now in the last session we built a servant leadership model with seven indicators. Now similarly we are going to make a model for financial performance with five indicators and then we are going to co-vary both these unobserved latent variables. Now how to do this in IBM SPSS AMOS? So let's go back to AMOS and as we did earlier in our last session we click here and we need one two three four five six seven indicators for servant leadership and similarly we need five indicators one two three four five for financial performance let's see our data well we haven't loaded any data that's why it's giving an error so what we do is how do we load data we will go here select data files We'll select file name and we will locate our data. And the data is loaded. I'll press OK. And here is my data set. Now, in order to move these indicators to the left, what I'll do is I'll select this, rotate the indicators of a latent variable. Now they are on the left. Let's do it for this one as well. Just click on the latent variable and they will be shifted towards the left. Now let's move this whole model to the center of the canvas. In order to do this, just select this truck icon here, move objects. Make sure you have preserved the symmetries. Click here and you can move it here. Similarly do it for the other construct. Here. Now we will move each of these indicators to their respective boxes. Drag SL1 here, SL2 here, SL3 here, SL4 here, SL5 here, SL6 here, and SL7 here. Now we are going to add financial performance. So where is financial performance? Financial performance with five indicators is here. Next, we will rename these latent variables. So double click here and let's name it SL. Now you can double click here, mention it as FP. Now next is you have to name these error terms. Now what you can do is just go to plugins, name unobserved variables. Now the last step is to co-vary both the latent variables. So what we do is we click here, draw covariances, double headed arrows and drag and drop onto the other construct. Now your model is ready to run. Before we run our model, let's go to analysis properties and select some analysis properties. So we go to output here. This is by default. Let's select standardized estimates, squared multiple correlation, modification indices, covariance of estimates and correlation of estimates. For now, these are the options that we are going to use. You can cross it because it's automatically selected. Then you do not need to press any OK. Now we will run or calculate our estimates. Obviously, you will have to first save the file. Let's save it as for CFA. Yes. So there was no issue in the computation. The model did run very well. So these select the standardized estimates, your parameter format, standardized estimate. Go to the output to see your output. Now, how do we read this output? I'm just going to show you in a minute. So let's come back here and let's see our output model. Now here is the output model. 
So the values you see on top of the arrows are your standardized regression weights or factor loading. This value here in the middle of this double headed arrow is the correlation estimate. Because we selected the standardized estimate, that's why we are saying this is a correlation estimate. This is square multiple correlation, that is the square of this value here. So if you square this value, you'll get 0.31. Similarly, for financial performance as well. These are the loadings and these are square correlation. Let's see where is the output of the model. In order to run or get the output, what you need to do is just go back to the model and click here, view text. This will show you the output. The first thing that you see is notes for the model. Although there are a number of different outputs, we will one by one go through each of the output and try to understand what it shows. Although we are just going to briefly discuss and as we go along the course or other videos, I'm going to discuss all these things in greater detail. So let's see what the output actually means. So the first thing that you see is notes for the model here. And this notes for the model actually shows us the chi-square and degree of freedom or degrees of freedom rather. Now, the first thing that you that's in this tree structure is analysis summary. And it actually shows just the date, time and title for your model. Sorry for the typing mistake. The next in the list is notes for the group. So if you've got grouping variable, you will see some more detail. But in this case, the model is recursive and the link will state your sample size. This is my sample size. And if the model is recursive or non-recursive in CFA, you should never have a non-recursive model. The next is variable summary. All the variables in your model will be shown here. This is the breakdown of your model that lists each variable and if it is an independent or dependent variable. You will see that all unobserved latent variables and all error terms in the CFA analysis are listed as independent and all the indicators are listed as dependent variable. So your unobserved variables are listed as exogenous variables, servant leadership, financial performance and with the error terms. Whereas all observed are listed as your endogenous or dependent variables. Now this is your parameter summary with the breakdown of all the parameters in the model. The next is very important output, the regression weights. So if you're using your measurement model or developing your measurement model, or if you're developing or assessing your structural model, this output and the next output are precisely very important. So the next tab is estimates tab. Now this is the tab where you have a lot of information. In estimates tab, you will find unstandardized and standardized regression weight. Now for CFA, these are referred to as factor loading. That is your standardized regression weights are your factor loadings. The first regression weights presented are the unstandardized regression weights. Now these are unstandardized regression weights. After these unstandardized estimates, the next column is standard error. And this is critical ratio, which is the t-value, and this is the p-value. Now, the p-value under 0.001 is listed as stars. Right next to regression weights, you will see a standardized regression weights. These are actually loadings, how well a particular item is representing its underlying construct. Now, the loading seems fine in this case because all of them except for SL1 and SL7 are greater than 0.70. So right under unstandardized regression weights in the output here, you will notice that they will have standardized regression weight, but they will not have standard error and critical ratio. So you can use these standard errors and critical ratios when you are reporting your results. Next is covariance and correlation. Covariance is unstandardized. So when the covariance value is standardized, it is the correlation. In this case, the correlation is moderate. And this will also help you assess multicollinearity. Next is variance and squared multiple correlation. Now at the bottom of the page, you will have squared multiple correlation. This is nothing more than the standardized regression weight that is squared. So if you square the loadings, you will get these squared multiple correlation. Next is modification indices. Very important when you are not getting your good model fit. 
we are going to have a detailed lecture on how to use these modification indices to improve your model fit. Now the values listed are modifications for possible covariances and also modifications if a regression weight or rather path was added. With the covariances data, the modification indices, value is how much chi-square value would decrease if you added a covariances. Now, how much chi-square would decrease if you add the covariance between E11 and E12, that is 77.744, that's quite large. The second column power change is how much parameter would change if the covariance was added. Now this is your parameter change. Now this will change the parameters positively, this one negatively, but this is quite high. We are going to look into how to use it in uh, coming videos. Now these are variances and regression weights. Modification for regression weights are inappropriate for CFA. So when you are doing CFA or building your measurement model, these are actually inappropriate. So we are not going to use this. You are denoting the relationship from the unobserved construct to its indicator. This should not change. So you cannot link your financial performance or covary financial performance with financial performance one or SL3 with financial performance one. As uh, we discussed this also in one of the earlier lectures on how to use modification indices. Now the next important thing is model fit summary. You're using covariance based SCM to assess how well your data fits your model. Now there are a number of model fit indices, but not all of them are reported and used in literature. Now these are the common ones. The ones in bold are the common ones that are reported. Now these eyes or these are the level of acceptance. So your chi-square should be insignificant. Your RMSCA less than 0.08. Your GFI, AGFI, CFI, TLI, NFI, all greater than 0 0.90. Chi square divided by degrees of freedom, that is your C min here. P C min is divided by degrees of freedom. It should be less than 3. As we see in this model, your RMSCA is not good. Here, your C min is not good. Your CFI, TLI, all these values are beyond the acceptable values. So what this tells us that there is evidence that our indicators are not adequately representing or measuring the intended concept. However, there are ways to improve your model fit. And we, as, as we go along, we are going to look into this as well. And finally, it's the execution time summary. So it's not that usable, obviously. Uh, it just shows the execution time and minimization history. We normally do not use it. And these are the references, important books if you want to learn in more detail on AMOS. I hope the lecture would have helped you understand the different outputs. And obviously these outputs will be discussed in detail in later lectures. This was just an introduction to the output. Thank you very much.